Hello and welcome again to another broadcast of Deep Cough and a Deep. I'm your host, Jeremy Lopez, and today I want to talk to you about Christmas time. You know, I know Christmas is around the corner, and so many of us are so excited about Christmas and and we know the Christmas story. We've heard about it. You know, we understand the Christ child being born and birthed through Mary. And we understand how God chose Mary, you know, because of her faith in God. Not even faith and understanding, you know, what was going to happen. But she had faith within God to know that God knew what was supposed to happen. And what, what, what uh, the role she was supposed to play within, you know, this amazing story. And uh, so we knowing, knowing that, sometimes we don't really stop to look and examine exactly what it was about Mary. And the main thing I want to talk to you about for a little bit is what to do when you have nothing. What to do when you have nothing. Because if you really think about it, you can look at the life of Mary and you can think about the fact that she didn't have a lot of money. She was young. It wasn't like she was educated. It wasn't like she had a corporation, a business. You know, we look at life and we think to ourselves, you know, Jesus really could have used, you know, one of the kings. I mean, in fact, why didn't you just use one of the, you know, we call them the wise men. Why don't you just use one of the magi? You know, why didn't you use someone that knew about the heavens, the stars, or, or was educated, you know, like the Pharisees? And why didn't you use somebody that could actually, you know, empower, you know, that was already empowered, they can empower their life, they can empower their child, they would know what to do with that kid, and you know, through education and through wisdom. And so we look at that and we think to ourselves, you know, what was what was God thinking when he chose Mary? Because Mary didn't have anything. She it wasn't like she was actually, you know, very goal oriented. She wasn't like a motivational speaker, you know, that she could prep everybody and, and tell the town exactly what was about to happen within her belly and how God was going to do it and why God was going to do it and, and how what would that lead it to, you know, for her and for her family and then for the nations. And so when you look at the situation, you realize that actually Mary was pretty much a frightful woman, was she not? She pretty much was at a place in her life where she didn't really know exactly what was happening. But I love the statement that she made, and that is, according to your words, so be it. Because when you look at the fact that God wanted to send His Holy Spirit to hover over uh, Mary, to basically, you know, uh, like a cloud would hover over a city, to be able to hover over her and begin to impregnate her. Now, can you imagine something that is never been done before. You know, it's not like we can turn around and we can read about it in Genesis where God did it again. You know, we read about it in Exodus, maybe where God did it that time, and, and here God does it again in Kings or or, or first and second Samuel. See, we we can't read stories where God has ever done this before because God has never done it before to a person. So you can imagine the, the fear, the fright maybe that Mary had, but yet she had confidence to know that He's God. And I think when we look at the situation of our lives to to say, I don't have a lot to offer, I don't have a lot to give, so how can maybe this prophetic word you know, happen within my life? Or, or I've got this great vision that I know God has put in my spirit to open up a company or how can I ever be a mother, you know, to, to, to a child? Because look at my past, look at my background of how maybe my parents, you know, treated me and maybe I didn't have the best role model as a mother or or, or, or a father, you know, or a dad that didn't treat me good, you know, I wasn't his little girl or or wasn't his little boy or whatever. You, you can look at the lo- your life and say to yourself, well, I don't really have a lot going on for me. But if you think about it, Mary did neither. And knowing that Mary didn't have a lot going for her, she knew one thing about her life that was so solid. And that was she knew the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. She knew the God of Israel was a God who did not break His promise with His people. That if He said it, He's, he's bound to do it. And that's why she brought forth the powerful statement, according to your word, God, so be it. That shows me and you that it's not about what we can do. It's about God if it's your word. In other words, if you say it, you're held accountable. You're held responsible for what you say to perform that word. In other words, if you speak something, God, you know, into the atmosphere, it's not my will. I can't do anything about it because you're the one that said it. How many of us in our lives have really had friendships with different people? And we all have gone through this, have we not? We've all been disappointed by people well, they were friends or family members who said something and yet either did another thing or either never even did it at all. You know, that said, okay, I'm going to take you to the grocery store, you know, on Tuesday morning because you need me to go. Or let's say, for example, hey, you asked me to, you know, take you to the shopping mall. Or hey, you asked me to take you to church. Or hey, I'm going to pay you back that $10 I owe you. You know, or maybe I, I'm, I'm going to owe you $1,000. So I'm going to pay it back to you um, first thing tomorrow morning when I get my paycheck. How many of us have had all these things and all of a sudden, 
you know, Tuesday comes, the next morning comes, and it's almost like you can hear a cricket, you know, uh, at the midnight hour, you because you can't see anything else. There's no results. Uh, the person never showed up. Everything's quiet, and all you can hear is just the quietness, you know, because you can't seem to to find out why somebody would would not be a person of the word. Why would they let you down? You know, why does that happen? And yet Mary knew, like we should know, if God, if you said it, I don't have to sit here and say, you didn't come through for me, God. Because God knows if I said it, God's going to follow through with it. And knowing that concept, what do we do when we don't feel as if we don't have anything going on in our lives? What do we do when God said something to us and yet we feel as if, you know, what am I going to do? Now, first and foremost, we know we should play our part, our role in the situation. And Mary did the same thing. Mary knew that if God said it, you know what, according to your word. Now, it was different if she said, you know, according to my word, you know, so be it. That means she would have the full responsibility to know that if I said it, I've got to follow through with this thing because it's not it's my word. But see, she's telling God, in other words, let's put it another way. She's basically putting God to the test, and that is this. God, if you said it, then you're going to have to do it. So it's according to your word. Hey, you know what? So be it. Let it be done according to what you say, not what I say. It's according to what you said because you said it to me. So since you said it to me, guess what? There's no responsibility for me because you're the one that said it, so you have to follow through with it. And knowing that, the only thing that she knew she was, uh, um, let's say, accountable for, or what she knew of the of the part she needs to play within this this this, this sequence or this this pattern that God, you know, was trying to to do, and and this word that He was trying to bring forth to her was basically just make sure you're in the right place at the right time. Make sure that you remain open. And yet we've said it once; we'll say it a thousand times. The main thing for each person on planet Earth who is trying to find out, you know, okay, God, you said it. What is my part? What is my role to play in the situation? The main thing we have to do is actually not that mysterious. It's not that hard. It's not that detailed. It's not the thing that it's step one, step two, step three. It's not that you have to be smart or educated or wise within the, you know, Harvard University or even, you know, that of, of being a theologian. All it takes and all is required of you is just to have an open ear and open heart. It's just to make sure you're saying, God, now even though you said it, so you're going to have to do it, I'm going to have to remain and keep the door of my ear open. to where That way, when you say what you want me to do to hey, either, quote unquote, A, help that um, that word come to pass, or make sure that I'm in the river, the flow of you doing it, the work that you're doing through that word that you said you, you, you're going to do, I just need to make sure I'm in that flow. Because bottom line is this, if God chose Mary to do what she's called to do, I am held responsible and accountable for making sure not that I perform the word but to make sure I'm in the right place at the right time to where I can hear when God says now to me, okay, even though I said it and this is my word how I'm going to do it to you, Mary, I also need you to make sure that you are in the right place at the right time to where when I begin to say, okay, here's how it's going to happen, Mary. My whole, I'm going to send my Holy Spirit to hover over you and then here's what's going to happen. You know, This is going to happen. They're going to come and try to kill all the infants. I need you and Joseph to get up and run to Egypt. I need you guys to get up and do this. So basically how it happened was Mary just needed to have an open heart. Yes, it was God's God's uh, word. Yes, it was God's responsibility to make sure he followed through with what he said. Absolutely. Because I or nor you can actually carry out the word of the Lord. But we are required to make sure, God, I just need to make sure I have an ear to hear and an eye to see that when you begin to do the work through the word in which you said you was going to do, that I actually am listening enough to be where you need me to be to where you can do your work. And the greatest thing I love about the story, it's sort of like each one of us who, let's say, for example, like I said earlier, you want to start a business. You know it's in your heart to do it. You know you've got to do this. You know you've got to do that. Well, it's not about sitting still, not doing anything, you know, being lackadaisical, waiting on God to do it. Because think of this way. It's actually not always God's Word. A lot of times God will speak to you, yet in your spirit or through your belly, so to say, and yet give you that, 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 that uh, idea, give you that creative you know, idea or expression to say, man, I got a gut feeling that I just feel as if I'm called to be a business owner. I can look back at my own life. 
I'll give you give you a exa- great example. I can look back at my own life and I can tell you when I was a lot younger, I went from job to job to job. I mean, I was so I was happy in my life, but yet I was so lost. And I knew that there was something there that I thought to myself, I am just not good at any of this stuff. And it wasn't because I was trying to be negative. It wasn't because necessarily, you know, I was trying to come against anything. It was just the fact that I didn't know what to do and everything I would try to do in each job. I just I did it to the best of my ability, but it just still wasn't me. It wasn't my niche. It wasn't where I finally clicked, you know, with what I'm called to do. And yet all of them were great jobs. But for me, and I'd see the other people around me who might have been happy doing what they're doing or or they would just be so diligent and you know trying to get this sale or that sale. And for me I thought I j- my just heart's not here. I've tried, I prayed, I did everything I possibly could, but it just wasn't me. It wasn't the niche I needed to be in. And so for for a while it came a little discouraging, you know, to me because I thought, what am I called to do? But yet inside of me, I knew that the call, and it wasn't the fact always that God quote unquote spoke to me and said, Thus saith the Lord, Son, I'm calling you to do this or that. And sometimes it was that. But sometimes it was that place of just knowing, you know what, when you know you're called to be a business owner, you just know you're called to be one. And it doesn't make you any greater, it doesn't make you any lesser. Does it mean you're on top of the game and over everybody? No. It means you're just called to do what you're called to do. Everybody in life, you must have bosses and you must have employees. You can't function with employees. They're the backbone of a business. And you can't function without a CEO. If not, there wouldn't be in a business. So when you look at that situation, you realize, for myself, I knew in me, I just wasn't called to work for people. And yet it frustrated me because I saw as so many other people were. Until finally something in me began to just go off. And I knew then in my spirit that I was called to be a business owner. I was called to own you know, businesses. I was called to be a leader. I was called to be a pillar in the house of God. I was called to write books. I was called to travel. I was called to be you know, an owner of a music company. I was called to do this and this and this. And so finally, all of a sudden, when it finally kicked into me, I, I remember walking, walking off my job after giving a two or three week notice and you know, I went home, I sat there on my computer, I'm thinking, now what? And do you know within hours, now I was by myself, sitting home by myself, and within and within hours, I was already working. I was already working on websites. I was already, already working on great, tremendous strategies and ideas and blueprints of how to do it, what to do it. And so, guess what? It's not the fact that you have to have a lot of money. It's not the fact that you have to be very educated. It's not the fact that you have to, to know exactly what you're after, and you have to know the end result. You you don't have to know that. Let God know the ending from the beginning. So guess what? God wants to work with you with what you have. And all He requires for you to do is this. Look, I'll give you the steps to do. You just And it's not the fact that you're needing a thus saith the Lord. You just got to follow the dreams and follow the heart of what I've called you to do. And if you know that you're called, you know what, to be the best employee ever. If you're called to be the best janitor, I got news for you. Schools couldn't function without the janitors. Sometimes they're just important, if not more important, than some of the teachers and different things. Because guess what? If things are not clean, if things are disgustingly gross and nasty, guess what happens? Then you've got a school that nobody wants to be part of. You've got a nasty, uh, you know, infected, uh, you know, area that's just nasty and gross. So guess what? There's got to be people to do every little supply. Every every little joint supplies, the Bible says, which means if whatever you're called to do in your life and you know you're called to do it, do it at your very best. You're doing it as unto the Lord. Do it your, with quality and integrity. And so you don't need a word from the Lord. You just know i got to follow my heart because I felt this is what I'm called to do within my life. And then you guess what? You're going to be a master. You're going to, it's going to be a masterpiece your work's going to turn out to be. You're going to be the master of your destiny destiny because you know then I'm doing what I'm called to do. I'm in the vein in the, of the flow of God of what I'm called to do. And so knowing that, guess what? Mary just waited on God to speak another word to her. Yet when God did speak to her the first time, she just knew after that, guess what? I just need to make sure I'm at the right place at the right time. I've just got to get, I got to somehow prepare Joseph. But you know what's so awesome about this? She was frustrated because her family didn't understand. She was frustrated because Joseph didn't get it. And you know, Joseph was such an amazing, loving guy. I sort of wonder sometimes why the Bible really didn't talk a lot more about Joseph when yet he was such a fascinating, amazing, loving man that he would cover a woman that really, think about it, you're, you're going by faith 
to tell me that God Himself got you pregnant, and yet there's no other man in this village that did this to you. Now, if that was today, let's be honest about it. Most of us would call the person a liar and call someone with a straitjacket and have them locked away because there is no way you can convince me that God came down and got you pregnant. <laughs> and so, guess what? You can imagine the frustration this man was going through. But yet, but yet, he didn't know what to do, but yet he covered her anyway. And God, in His gracious mercy and loving kindness, guess what He did? He gave Joseph a dream and told him within the dream to take her as his own. Now, that's powerful. That's something that you cannot find today in most men and women, most men and women of God. It's fascinating to see that power and that level of commitment and love and covering someone that you don't, you're not even sure they're even telling the truth, but you believe them anyway. And so when you look at the situation of all these people, you think to yourself, all the frustration, all of these things that they went through, but Mary remained faithful. And yet God was faithful to His Word. He, he gave the dream to Joseph to confirm this is what happened to, to Mary. This is what I did. This is what my Holy Spirit did. I, I'm going to send you, Joseph, to take her and go here and go to this place. And you're going to end up going to, to Bethlehem. You're going to go to Nazareth. You're going to go here. You're going to go there. And so it took a level of faith, did it not? It took a level to know that Mary didn't... It wasn't like God said, I'm going to give you uh, $15,000 right here, Mary. I want you to go to this hotel room. You know, here's, here's your supply ahead in advance. And can I tell you, we're so Americanized. If you're in America listening to me, which many of you are not, and many of you are. We're so Americanized and Western-minded that we have to be able to see the money first before we act upon the vision. Is that not correct? We've got to make sure we've got everything comfortable enough to actually start what we're supposed to be doing in our lives. And yet, guess Guess what? Mary had nothing. God never said, Mary, I'm going to give you $15,000 to go ahead and jumpstart what's about to happen to you. There was nothing, folks. Nothing at all. All she went on was this word that, uh, that she heard within her mind, within her spirit. Can you imagine thinking to yourself, either I'm crazy or either this is the real, th- real deal. And so knowing that she went off the word of God with no proof whatsoever, because think about it, you don't start showing when you're pregnant until, you know, a little bit later down the road. And so here's a woman who, a young girl, who basically knew that whatever I have in my life, I'm just going to have to go with that. So you don't have to have a lot. You don't have to have anything. You just got to have God's permission. You got to have God speak a word of the Lord to you. And if He doesn't, and let's say, for example, in your heart you're saying, God, I need I need a word of the Lord. And all of a sudden in your heart you know, you felt that all of your life, that, you know, I'm just called. I know there's something in me that I'm called to do this. I'm called to, you know, to own my own spa, my own salon. I'm called to be a minister. I'm called to, you know, travel the world and, 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 and be a photographer. I'm called to, you know, um, do, do, uh, dive to the you know deepest parts of the floors of the sea you know to to do discoveries to do this and do that and if you know it's in your heart can I encourage you today you don't have to have all the money you don't have to have anything all you need to know is say you know what I know that I believe this is in my DNA to do this I've gotten confirmation from the Lord or I feel at peace about it and you go for it. The, the, the biggest thing I could recommend to people, especially within the Western world, is let's get away from the Western mindset. Let's get away from the Western uh, the way of thinking. And let's not be so comfortable minded that we can't be the kingdom, you know, any good to the kingdom. We've got to learn to say, you know what, if, if, if God called me to do it, I've got to do it. Because joy is involved. And yet happiness and grace is involved. And destiny is involved. And that's why I say you don't have to have anything in your life, all you have to do is just learn to be. And when you learn to be what you feel in your spirit God has called you to do, and even if God has given you a word of the Lord, or you just know that you know that you know all of your life is just something in you that you felt as if you're a square peg in a round hole, that you don't fit into this, but yet you would fit over here in this community, or in that job, or owning this, or working for this company. If you just know that you know that, I would want to recommend to you today, leave your comfort zone and move over into that. Because it's not about what you have. It's about the faith that you believe you can accomplish that because you believe with all that's in you this is what God has for me this is my destiny then you can only then you, then and only then can you find yourself saying truly every joint truly does supply and then I know at that moment I'm doing what I was put here on earth to do because I look at my life now and I say you know what I am finally the past 12 years of my life and yet I've traveled most of my life but yet very very far and rare and, and rare uh, in between in the past before 12 years 
years ago. But the past 12 years of my life have been the greatest days that I've ever walked on earth because it brings me joy. Is there challenges? Absolutely. Is there days of total divine stress because of the fact I've got to make decisions? Absolutely. But can I tell you something? I would not trade those stressful days of having to make a decision within my businesses and having to make a decision on about a book or maybe having to redo a chapter or maybe do I want to speak in this coliseum? Do I want to speak in this church? Do I want to do this and this? Guess what? Those decisions and even that stress that might come with it, guess what? It might look like stress to you and it might feel like stress to me, but it's an amazing stress. It's an amazing part that I know I'm called to do and that only I can do. And so it's still one of the greatest feelings you can ever in your life have. That's why I say to you today, be like Mary. If God tells you to do something, just say, according to your word, God, so be it. I just want to be at the right place at the right time. I've got to learn to be and i got to let you perform it. You do it. And i just got to just follow the dreams, follow the heart and the mind of Christ in me to carry out this thing that you've called me to do, God. And I guarantee you, before long, you're going to be like Mary. You're going to find yourself in Bethlehem, the place where you need to be in your life. And when you get there, you're going to find all of a sudden, guess what? The baby's ready to come forth. I feel the pushing. I feel something in me begin to push and something's beginning to come forth. And all of a sudden, you'll be at the right place at the right time. And then and only then will you find your, to find yourself where God will open you up and all of a sudden the birthing will begin and your destiny will finally arrive. And when that happens, it'll be the best feeling you can ever have in your whole life. And today, listen to me at the sound of my voice. I want to encourage you today, during this Christmas season, not only find yourself as you give and as you receive and as you remember the wonderful things Christmas can bring to us and the wonderful nativity scene, the story of Christ. When we go through all of that, I want you to also remember, look deep into the story of Christ and and Christmas and Mary and Joseph and think about their feelings. Think about what they went through, the emotional stress they had to deal with. Think about all of this stuff and when you do, just think for a a second, you know what? It was well worth it, wasn't it, Mary? Because you ran the race. You did what you're called to do even at that level of fear, stress, anxiety, and almost being to the point of being stoned to death for being someone that committed maybe adultery, fornication, whatever. And yet in all of that, I want to be just like Mary. I want to be the person that if nobody else believes me and nobody else sees my vision, it's perfectly fine because there will come a day when God will carry and perform His own Word and He'll give people around me dreams and visions and He'll confirm them. And for those that He does not confirm, I've still got to follow my heart to know what I believe God has put inside of me to do and carry out. Whether it's through a prophetic word or just an unction in my spirit or just a desire in my heart that I felt like has been there all my life and that's the vein I must get into. I want to encourage you today, dive into that. Dive into that. It's not about who can be on your side. When I started my own business and ministry, I didn't have anyone on my side at that moment. No one. But guess what? Within months it took everyone in my life to finally get on board to say, you know what? We never thought a million years just would happen. And because of because I went against the odds to hear what God wanted me to do in my life, and I went against everything and everyone, so to say, I, as I walked in love and listened to the voice of the Spirit, talking to my spirit, as I began to do that, I can look back and say, you know what? It was so well worth it. Because if I allowed one person, one negative thing to get to me to say, you can't accomplish this, you can't achieve it, guess what? Because of what I've done, I was able, I'm still able to be a world changer, to change in nations with writings, with publications, with with music, with websites, with all this stuff. So well, is it, was it well worth it for me? Absolutely. And guess what? It'll be well worth it for you as well. Today, find yourself moving in what God wants you to do. And then in the long run, you'll look back and say, thank you, God, that I ran the race. Against the odds, I put my hand to the plow, and I didn't look back, God, like Mary. I want to encourage you today. Before we close this broadcast, I want to encourage you today, during this Christmas season of this wonderful month we're entering into of December 2013, how time flies when you're having fun, does it not? I want you to remember today, if you have anything you need to get, you know, we have amazing books, teaching CDs, music, all these different great things on IdentityNetwork.net. We have thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of subscribers who support this amazing ministry. And today, I want to tell you, today being Cyber Monday, I want to encourage 
you. And we're going to allow, we're going to extend the, the special just for three days, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. But we are giving 30% off on every one of Identity Network's music department. And we're also going to give 30% off on every one of our teaching sets. So you're talking about hundreds of items for 30% off the retail price. And so I'm going to encourage you today, go to the website, identitynetwork.net. Order as many as you possibly can because I'm here to tell you this is the lowest price we've ever given on all of our Identity Network sets and all of our Identity Network music. And uh, and once again, we'll ship it out to you today. Or if it's MP3, guess what? You get it automatically sent your email at 30% discount. And there's some of them we have MP3s that are like 4 and, and 5 and 6 and up to 9 or 10 or 12 MP3s that are as low as $20. Well, in fact, we have some for $13. So I'm here to tell you, today is your day. You need to go to the website. If you want to order some and you want to know more about what's, what I'm talking about, give us a call right now. It's only three days and then it's over with for good. And our number here at the office is 205 205- 362-7133. That's 205-362-7133. And to our next broadcast, have an amazing day. God bless you. Don't forget today to listen to the voice of God. Move out in destiny. You only have one life to live. God bless you.